Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing glycolysis. Okay, so so far what we've seen is that we've created these two products, glyceraldehyde-free phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which is often abbreviated to DHAP. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is the dihydroxyacetone phosphate is going to be turned into another molecule of glyceraldehyde-free phosphate. So, how can we make sense of this? Well, what we can imagine doing, and again, this isn't a molecular mechanism, but uh, what you can imagine doing is breaking the two bonds between uh, this carbon and this oxygen atom here in the dihydroxyacetone phosphate molecule. Okay, that will give... Um, Oh, well, I should just say, and imagine sending two electrons back to the carbon and two electrons back to the oxygen. Okay, that will give this carbon two free electrons and the oxygen will also have two free electrons. Then imagine cutting two of these bonds here. So cut this bond between the carbon and the hydrogen here, give one electron back to the hydrogen, one back to the carbon, and give, cut this bond between the alcohol group and the carbon, give one electron back to the alcohol group and one back to the carbon. This means that this carbon will then have two free electrons, bind these two free electrons to the oxygen atom which has two free electrons to create an aldehyde group. Okay, so I'll draw this down here. So here is our aldehyde group now here. Now take this hydrogen, bind it to one of the free electrons of this carbon to create a single bond, okay, like so, and take the alcohol group and do the same thing, which is on here. And then leave the rest of this absolutely alone. So you've got this methylene group with an alcohol group and a phosphate group coming off it, and then observe in wonder that this is just this rotated uh, 180 degrees. Okay, so we have converted dihydroxyacetone phosphate into another molecule of glycerol. And I shouldn't have put the arrow from acetone. It should have been from dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Okay, uh, so this reaction is actually reversible. Okay, so dihydroxyacetone phosphate can be turned into glyceraldehyde-free phosphate, and glyceraldehyde-free phosphate can also be turned back into dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So I'll write out its name again. Okay, and it is catalyzed by the enzyme uh, triose phosphate isomerase. Okay, so this is glyceraldehyde-free phosphate. And the enzyme which catalyzes the conversion between dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde-free phosphate is, where should I put this? I'll put it here. It's called triose phosphate isomerase. Okay, so both uh, glyceraldehyde-free phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate are viewed as triose phosphates, basically. Okay, so we're changing between one triose phosphate and another triose phosphate. And the reason they're viewed as being triose phosphates is all this literally means is free carbons, which they both have, and then the phosphate group of it. So they are both um, triose phosphate molecules. Okay, so we're just changing between uh, one triose phosphate and another. And the reason this is important is that glyceraldehyde-free phosphate is the molecule that is then going to go on in the glycolysis pathway. And this is when we leave uh, the uh, setting up phase, the investment phase, or the preparatory phase, and go into the payoff phase of glycolysis. And we're going in with two molecules of glyceraldehyde-free phosphate. And that's important to remember when we calculate at the end how much ATP we've actually produced from this uh, reaction. We've got two glyceraldehyde-free phosphate molecules. Okay, so we'll now look at what is going to happen to the glyceraldehyde-free phosphate molecules. Okay, and this is the payoff phase now. Okay, so I'll put as a title, payoff phase, and then we'll copy out the molecule of glyceraldehyde-free phosphate again because it's so important, and then we'll see what's going to happen to it next. Okay, so to remind ourselves, we've got our aldehyde molecule, well, our aldehyde group here. We've then got our second carbon, which has an alcohol group coming off it, and a hydrogen coming off it, and then the third carbon, which has a hydrogen, another hydrogen, and then an alcohol group, which has a phosphate group attached to it, like so. Okay, so this is glyceraldehyde-free phosphate. Okay, so.
What's going to happen to it next? Well, basically, you are going to add another phosphate group onto this molecule, okay? So, this phosphate group isn't going to come from ATP this time. It's going to come from an inorganic phosphate group, okay? So, here is our inorganic phosphate group, and we're going to bring it in and attach it onto uh, the glyceraldehyde-free phosphate molecule like this. And this is going to be a reversible reaction that we're about to catalyze. Okay, so it can go forwards, but it can also go backwards. Okay, and it's going to be catalyzed by an enzyme known as glyceraldehyde free phosphate dehydrogenase. Okay, so glyceraldehyde free phosphate dehydrogenase. And the reason it's called glyceraldehyde free phosphate dehydrogenase is that in the process of creating uh, the product that we're going to get out of this, it's also going to create a molecule of reduced NAD. Okay, so let me explain what's going to happen and then we'll see how it's going to produce a molecule of reduced NAD. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is cut the bond between the carbon and the hydrogen atom here. And what you can imagine doing is giving one electron from this bond back to the carbon and one back to the hydrogen. Then also take your inorganic phosphate here and cut a bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen on here. Again, give one electron to the oxygen and one back to the hydrogen. Then bind this oxygen to this carbon here. So this carbon has a free electron, this oxygen has a free electron. Bind them together. So I'll now draw out the molecule that we will get here. Okay, so here is the phosphate group that comes off the third carbon. Whoops, it doesn't come straight off the third carbon, it has an oxygen between the two. Okay, and then you have a methylene group, uh, another carbon, the second carbon, which has an alcohol group coming off it, and now the first carbon, which is no longer an aldehyde group. Okay, instead, it's effectively got a carboxylic acid group here that is ester linked uh, via a phosphoester link rather than a normal ester link uh, to a phosphate group. Okay, so what is this called? Well, to understand the naming of this, we need to look at another molecule that is named after glycerol. So we saw glyceraldehyde was the name for a glycerol molecule where the first carbon had been turned into an aldehyde group. Now, there is another molecule which is the name for a, um, a glycerol molecule where the first carbon has been turned into a carboxylic acid group. Okay, and this is known as glycerate. Okay, and the reason it's called glycerate is in the same spirit as the difference between pyruvic acid and pyruvate. Okay, so you could call this glyceric acid, uh, but no one ever does. Okay, strictly speaking, glycerate should refer to uh, the oxygen once it's lost its proton, but of course people use the words interchangeably because whenever you've got this molecule, you also have the conjugate base. So people use glyceric acid and glycerate interchangeably, but people don't generally use glyceric acid, they use glycerate. Okay, so this is called glycerate. It's like when people uh, say glutamate rather than glutamic acid. Okay, they, the two are interchangeably used, or aspartate compared to aspartic acid. Right, okay, so um, we have got this molecule in here. I claim that this here is this molecule with two phosphate groups stuck on via phosphoester links. Therefore, this molecule is what is known as 1,3, and then it's bisphospho, because you've got two phosphate groups, and then it's 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate. Okay, so it's glycerate with phosphate groups stuck onto the first and the third carbon um, atoms, or the alcohol groups of the first and third carbon atoms. Okay, now, this reaction is reversible, but also what we have to think about is what happened to these two hydrogens. And these were not just protons. These were protons with their electrons. Remember, I said give the one of the electrons from each of these bonds back to the hydrogen. So these are actually protons with electrons. They are hydrogen atoms rather than hydrogen cations. They are hydrogen atoms. And basically, there is a special molecule that can bind to hydrogen atoms. And this is known as nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And when it doesn't have the hydrogens present, you put a little plus there to um, 
show uh, oxidized um, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And then when it has accepted two hydrogen atoms, and note it doesn't just accept the protons, it takes the electrons as well. Uh, it accepts both the protons and the electrons. We write NADH. Now, this is a confusing notation because it suggests that this only accepts one proton when, in fact, it can accept two, okay? Uh, so, what this H here means is it doesn't just mean one hydrogen atom, it means that it's accepted two, basically. So, this is the shorthand for reduced NAD. So, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, I should just write that out at least once. Nicotinamide, that's the N. Uh, a is for adenine, and then the D is for dinucleotide. So you would read this as oxidized NAD, and you would read this as reduced NAD. So nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide. Right, okay, so we've now produced 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, okay, and that was a reversible reaction again. What we're now going to do is we're going to remove one of the phosphate groups from uh, the 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Uh, and again, this now is a reversible reaction. And this is when we're starting to get a payoff, basically. Because when we take the phosphate group off this time, what that will do is it will generate a molecule of ATP from ADP. So we're going to bring a molecule of ADP in. We're going to nick a phosphate group off this 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate molecule, and it will be this first phosphate group here. And we're going to attach it onto the adenine, um, sorry, the adenosine diphosphate molecule, and um, create adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so this is when we're starting to get a payoff. And what this will create then is a molecule known as free phosphoglycerate, because you'll have the glyceric acid or the glycerate with uh, the phosphate group on the third carbon alcohol group still. So free phosphoglycerate. And again, you could use glyceric acid if you want, uh, but glycerate is far more common. Okay, so we'll have a carboxylic acid group here. Remember, this carboxylic acid group, it may well have the proton on or it may well not have the proton on. Of course, there'll be a mixture of them within the cell, okay, and there'll be an equilibrium. Uh, so strictly speaking, of course, I should call this free phosphoglyceric acid, but everyone just calls it free phosphoglycerate. Okay, right. And then we've got a carbon here, two hydrogens off there, and we've still got the phosphate group on this third carbon here. Well, the alcohol group of the third carbon. Like so. Okay, now which enzyme catalyzes this reaction which produces ATP? Well, this is a molecule known as phosphoglycerate kinase. And you might think, well, isn't that an odd name? Because it's removing a phosphate group. So why on earth is it called a kinase enzyme? Well, it's named because it can catalyze the reverse reaction in which it would add on the phosphate group onto free phosphoglycerate. And therefore, it would be a phosphoglycerate kinase. Okay, so that's the origin of its name. Right, so we've now created this free phosphoglycerate. What we're going to do is take this further now. Uh, we're going to swap the phosphate group from this third carbon's alcohol group onto the second carbon's alcohol group. So effectively, what you can imagine doing is just chopping this one off here, chopping this one off here, swapping them around, putting this alcohol group on there, putting the, this alcohol group with the phosphate group attached onto there, and again, this reaction is reversible, okay? And we're just going to, again, change the structural isomer of the molecule. So here's the uh, carboxylic acid group here. Here's the second carbon, which will now have the oxygen, which has the phosphate group linked to it via a uh, phosphoester link here, okay? Whoops, what have I done here? Oh, that's a weird way of showing it, but never mind. It's perfectly correct, okay? And then third carbon here, We'll then have our alcohol group, which has been restored here, and we'll have two hydrogens coming off here. Okay, so this now is called 2-phosphoglycerate. So this molecule is 2-phosphoglycerate.
and uh, the enzyme which catalyzes the conversion of free phosphoglycerate into 2-phosphoglycerate like this is what's known as phosphoglycerate mutase. So we had phosphoglycerate kinase catalyzing the previous reaction, now we've got phosphoglycerate mutase, which is changing uh, the structural isomerism of the molecule. Okay, so phosphoglycerate mutase. Okay, right. Uh, the two phosphoglycerate mutase will then go on to form phosphoenolpyruvate, but we'll discuss that in the next video.